Hey there everyone. So we're going to do a little bit of a switch up here. This is uh, my second playthrough. This is one I did on Radiant just to play through the game very quickly. When I was starting this channel, I needed just footage of certain things. I made a quick Radiant one, but that's beside the point. So today we're going to talk about the districts, uh, Crimson Core, obviously Colors of Madness related, and all that jazz. We're going to talk about which ones are maybe the best, and maybe, maybe which ones you can kind of go on without. We're just going to head left or right essentially. Like I said, this isn't a very formal video, but in case you're watching, it is definitely something to consider if you only have finite resources and personal time. The mill, 10 memories. This is what these are. These are memories, not shards. Uh, right up here, it should highlight. Okay, well, it's it's memories, and then these are shards. Memories are only gotten from a certain boss in Colors of Madness, and can, this can actually take a while to do, as he says right here in the Endless Harvest quest. It takes a while. I personally wouldn't... I never got it yet because it just takes so long to get memories. And yeah, it's nice not to get hunger checks, but it's one of those things. It's like, if you're doing uh, Stingium, you're not going to have time to get this anyways, so it doesn't really matter. And second off, by the time you get this, you're probably going to be near done with the game anyways, unless you just main Colors of Madness to get this. So I think the mill, go the whole game without, never too sad about. Gem stacking by one, it's okay, I mean... Often I actually don't hit five in most gems, uh, maybe medium and long you will, but if you do just short and medium, even a medium, it's very difficult to. So unless you're doing a, long, a lot of long dungeons, I don't think that's very useful. I can't remember the water increase buffs, but the actually the laudanum's adding a straw freeze this buff is actually kind of nice when you get uh, hard. It can actually kind of reverse some of that damage by decreasing stress coming in. So, But once again, it's 99 shards. I think this one... If I was to go with any of them, would be the best out of the three. Because obviously the disease rebuff, uh, disease resist buff is very good. And obviously adding even resist buff on the blight. This pretty much just ensures that the warns and the weld are going to get trashed on, which is very good. Uh, the Red Hook Monument, an absolute must. Get those 750 crests. Not much more else to say. Show your dedication, please. The bank, by far, obviously, number one. I mean, 5% each week. It is uh, your status, your your gold here. If you can really be disciplined and just save a lot of your gold, not spend it, the bank will just make you disgustingly rich within no time, and you'll have more money than, than you will know to do with. And my other, what I call main run through, it's my third playthrough. I have over, I think, a billion gold at this point. It's just ridiculous how quickly that uh, compounds on itself. Torchlight is more beneficial. I really, really wish they would show you what that means. That's some of my biggest pet peeves, side rant here, about the Darkest Dungeon. It just says stuff, and you don't always know what it means. But it increases loot drop, I believe critical strike... Is it critical strike chances? Yeah, I think it's crit strike chances. And scouting chance and radiant light, and there's some other stuff. Either way, for 300 crests, it's actually not that hard to get 300 crests, and only 1,000 gold. It's a beautiful thing to get. And in all honesty, you can work towards both of these at the same time because obviously they don't share anything other than a blueprint. The granary actually can't be underestimated. Uh, the increased he uh, healing when you eat is very good. And obviously just free food means you have to spend less money each week or you can obviously take more in. It just absolutely ensures your survivability for parties with low heals because even if it gives you eight more food, that's uh, two more hunger checks, or obviously eight more food you can feed people. It actually really allows you to push a little further without healers, which is very nice because it allows you to actually incorporate some variety in the game. The granary is very good, and technically you can work towards all three of these so far without overlapping each other. Puppet Theater is also another great one. It's a great way that you pretty much don't have to buy stress-related facilities. Obviously, the idle stress relief in town increased by 10 per week. That's a pretty big deal. So really, you don't have to buy too many stress facilities if you have this. Thus, you're going to save all those other heirlooms. You can actually put towards skills, uh, weapons, or obviously other other districts here. The Sanguine Venters, obviously very good. How do, yeah, vent, vent, Venters? Okay, well, way to butcher that. It's very good if you're doing the Crimson Court, obviously. If you, if you know you're going to do Crimson Court, you can feel free to buy this maybe... Uh, 8 to 10, man, I actually don't even need that many. 4 to 5 weeks early and then pop in the Crimson Court if you want. 80 bus is a lot though. Um, I think there's other things to get it that's much better, but if you're really struggling to keep up with your blood demand, 
and you're already in the middle of a campaign, I would ask how much time you've put into that and then maybe reconsider coming back and getting this district before you go back in. House of the Yellow Hand, Bounty Hunters, Grave Robbers, and Highwaymen get crit and scouting. It's pretty darn good, however, that 100 portrait cost is what really turns me off from it, from getting it quickly. 100 portraits is a lot to get. You can only stack 3 portraits, so you figured you need uh, 33 stacks. That's a lot of stacks. I remember getting this one way late in the game because uh, obviously portraits work towards your skills. And skills are going to be way more important than crit chance and a 5% scouting chance. So it's very low in the totem pole for me just based on the fact that it's 100 portraits. The, stu the stuff itself is very good. It's just a 100 portrait ticket. Altar of Light, Crusader Vessel, Fledgling, 10% Stun Resist. That's uh, more important on the Vessel than it really is the Crusader or Fledgling. And then the 10% Healing. So this is pretty much the Altar of Light for Vestals. It's obviously not bad on the other ones because they do heal. The 200 Deeds is a little rough though because once again you really want to get your uh, weapons and all that upgraded. Most of these are end game conditions. Most of these you would never really buy. However, some of them you can definitely actually pluck throughout. Such as the uh, Cartographer's Camp. And what was the other one? I can't remember. But you can actually pluck a couple during the game. But the Altar of Light, once again, would definitely be a late game scenario. Harbalist, Houndmaster, Man Arm, Shieldbreaker, Musketeer. That's. Is that five? Yeah, that's five. Wow. Well, okay. Wait, it might. Yeah, it's five. Sorry. Uh, plus four accuracy, 10% max HP. I mean, I, I would never fight against more accuracy and more HP for free. And it's only 300 crests, which means you can actually boost that up pretty quick. So. Uh, training ring would be like a medium to late game one if you want, if you use these heroes often. I mean, the Houndmaster, Man at Arms, and Shieldbreaker alone, those three would be enough for me to be like, it's probably worth it. Oh, man. Me trying to stay stuff is rough. Let me just, I'll say it live for you here. Athenaeum. Nope, let's try again. Athenaeum. Nope, let's go to Google. God loves some of these things. Sometimes you just go through and you look at stuff, you're like, yep, I am smart. Like I said, this is not a very official guide because usually... Athenaeum. Athenaeum. There we go. I'll even leave uh, Google's pronunciation in there for you. Athenaeum. So Andy Corium, Occultist and Plague Doctor. Obviously the Blight Chance goes up and the Debuff Chance skill goes up. And Curios give you 15... Well, Knowledge Curios give you 15 Stress Heal. I will admit, I don't often use the Knowledge Curios for the Stress Heal... Uh, the Blight Chance on the Plague Doctor is probably the big one. Obviously, the Occultist would be more of the, for the debuff, and the Antiquarium technically functions on both very well. For the price of 110 Deeds, eh, I mean, I think there's some... The Blasphemous Vial pretty much takes care of your Plague Doctor for you, so I think, really, in the end, this is not a very good one. can definitely wait till one of the last ones, for sure. So, the Performance Hall is one of the weirdest ones. This one can be... Like, you can get this immediately, and I do because it's minus 10% on the stresses it's minus 10% stress on the jester which is just very good and then plus two speed amazing and then just free I mean it's not a lot but when you consider it's only 500 gold and 40 crest why not and it's so cheap I can even buy it right now and just I mean just let's let's look at it ah look at that and it's a fun little building I mean it's so cheap, you might as well. I think this is absolutely, like, a number one you can get because it's so cheap that it doesn't... Like, 40 crests is, like... You can do that in a short dungeon. So, it's just so easy to get. Absolutely recommend. And then, Outsider's Bonfire. I really feel like the Abominations, the Hellions, and the Lepers kind of got screwed because everyone else actually got useful stuff. And, like, you have to have them in a medium dungeon to get two more campfire points. It's like, really? You're going to make me... Like, they didn't give any love towards the Abomination Hellion or Leper. I feel bad because this really isn't an incentive to take them in. Because two more points, sometimes it's not even really a useful skill. Now, if you were talking four more points, oh my gosh, would that have been an incentive. But two, not even close in my honest opinion. So that's all of them. Once again, rather unformal video, but... I will pop over to my next game here to show what they all look like built, except for the mill. You can go look that one up online. Alright, here we are. We are back in my other playthrough. I have eight memories. I actually could eventually finish that. I might, just to get all the districts. I think it's an achievement. I don't really care too much, but it would finish it. And it wouldn't take too long. It would be like maybe three to four hours of gameplay. Alright, so let's just start this. 
So here's the study hall. The gem stacking. It's, it's not bad looking. The tainted well. Don't know how much we're really going to get out of that well with a shards jamming out of it. The uh, the orchard here is the one I recommend. So I got some of that. And then obviously the... Oh, I don't have that. Let me build that. <sighs> Sorry. There we go. Oh, that's a... Oh, that's... Okay. Sorry. The reason why I didn't have this one is because it's the Revenant mod. I didn't know they made a district for the Revenant mod. The Revenant is... Oh, and another side note, I do have a couple of mods on Harlot, Revenant, right here. Oh, it popped up from behind, but anyway, that's the Revenant character. I guess he came with his own structure. I did not know that. Anyhow, looks pretty cool, though. Pretty dank. Uh, obviously, the Red Hook one. Bank, probably the best one in the game. Card Graphics Tent, very good. Uh, granary, looking kind of nice here. Uh, definitely simplistic. Oh, the puppet theater. That's pretty cool. What is that? Bone royalty and fighting somebody? I believe that's bone royalty. Don't like those guys. Obviously, here's the blood. It's hard to believe this thing can only make two bottles each week with that whole thing filled up with blood. Do you think it would be a little more effective? But hey. Uh, the yellow hand. Um, interesting. I don't know. I'm probably missing some thematic themes to this, but whatever. Altar of Light, obviously. This is where we're going to go pray and stuff. Training Ring, here you go. Got an arrow in there. Uh, probably some bullet holes there, maybe. So cool stuff. Weapons galore for the man at arms. Ah, uh, that looks... Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe more of a lab-based, but eh, not too bad. We saw the performance hall, and then boom, Outsiders Bonfire. Getting that pig and beer going. There we go. Revel up with the uh, Hellion there. All right, I hope you enjoyed this art. Um, I was happy to see that the Revenant got his own. There must be some more stuff. Immune to death by Crimson Curse. Interesting. But yeah, so. Not sure what the mill looks like, but I imagine it'd be a windmill just with crystals bursting out of it. So probably not to... Uh, yes, that's Revenant right here. So, uh, Like I said, DLC character. Actually, if I click on this, ah, okay. I thought I thought there was a picture of the windmill in here, but it would probably look like that kinda, but with uh, shards probably piercing out of there. So it it'd probably look pretty cool, but not the end of the world. Three inch eleven foes reap. Go see that video if you haven't done that yet. It is just essentially a double shield breaker strat, and actually, if I scroll up here, I might have used them last, and I can show you. No, I did not use them last. Uh, okay. Well, if I didn't use them last, I don't know where they're at, but it's a double shield breaker comp. Oh, this was my... Okay. This was pretty much my comp right here, I believe. It's just something like that. But yeah, it's the double shield breakers. Her... Yeah, it might have been the healing skills. Yeah, these four right here. Uh, one at 8 speed, one at 11 speed, obviously gets more in the torch light, so it really makes a huge speed difference, which allows you to do just impale over and uh, imposter syndrome. No way. Sorry. Even though I don't play on this run much anymore, no way are we dealing with imposter syndrome. Alright. Thank you for watching. Hope you like the channel. Hope you like the game. Like and subscribe below.